All right, Daniel here. In this video, we're going to be talking about strings, which are basically everywhere in Scala, in Java, and basically every programming language. In this video, we're going to be learning some Scala specific string niceties, plus some standard operations on strings. So let's get right to it. All right. So as usual, right click on the part one basics package in our project called Scala class. And let's call this string ops. Again, we're going to make this an object and make this extend app. Okay, so now our code is runnable. Right, so let's declare a string. And let's give this uh, quite a bit of a longer text. So let's say, hello, I am learning Scala. Okay, so this is a decent string. Now, what I want to show you is quite a few standard string operations. So strings have a number of methods. If you know Java, this uh, will come as a refresher for you. So notice this little dot, which is a method call. So string dot car at, let's say index two. Strings are zero indexed. So this is character number zero. Then this is character number one, this is character number two, this is what we're gonna print, and so on and so forth. So car at returns the character at that index. Okay, so if I right click and run, I'm going to see the letter L. Let me enter presentation mode so you can see this more clearly. Now, another utility that we often use is substring which takes one or two indices. This uh, has multiple implementations. So let's say I have the substring from index seven, which is inclusive, up to index 11, exclusive, All right? So this is basically the substring I am. So if I right click and run, I'm going to see I am here in the console, okay? This, we also have split which splits the string into multiple pieces depending on the delimiter. So if the delimiter is a space, so basically split returns an array of all the substrings, which are, as we wrote this in, the, in this example, the words separated by spaces. So this will return an array, which is not very printable. I'm going to use to list to print this a uh, little bit more uh, prettier. Okay, so hello, then so this is hello, comma, and this comma is from the list representation. All right, and then I am learning Scala in different strings. Then we have tests for strings, for example, starts with hello. And this function returns true or false depending on whether the original string starts with the parameter string. In this case, it will return true. Now we have replacement functions. So replace. So uh, as you see, we have quite a few replace um, implementations and versions. But a very simple and um, widely used um, version is just the simple replace uh, with two string parameters. So say, for example, I'm replacing all the spaces with dashes. I'm going to see quite a weird string. So hello dash, I am learning Scala all with a dash. Okay. We also have um, functions to lowercase and to uppercase, which turn um, every cap letter into uh, small caps and vice versa. All right, so string to lowercase says, hello, I'm learning Scala with all lowercase. And finally, very useful, the length function, which as you see, it's called uh, without parameters. So it's also called without parentheses. If you remember, this is alternative syntax, and um, this will return the length of the string, which in this case will be 26, okay? All the functions are also present in the Java language. So uh, as you know, Scala runs on, the top, on top of the Java virtual machine, 
and it has access to the string class in the Java language. So these are all uh, Java functions that are available in Scala. Besides that, Scala has its own utilities. So if I say, for example, um, if I have a number string, which is the number, say, I don't know, 45, I can actually convert this automatically to an integer by saying it a number string dot to int, as simple as that. And this converts a number to an int. So actually the number 45. Also, we can have concatenation and prepending. So prepending and appending. Let me show you what I mean. So if I say the character A, watch what I'm writing, plus colon, a number string, that means I'm prepending the character A to a number string. So it will return A45. Appending is with the symmetrical operation with to colon plus, which is colon plus. And let's say we have Z. So if a number string, let's say it's two, the number two, this guy will say A to Z. Right? So the prepending and appending operators are Scala specific. Also, we have reverse. So if I say str, which is the this little text above, if I say reverse, this is also a Scala specific utility function. Although not very useful in this case. Also, we have list like functions. So for example, if I want to take two characters out of the string, it will just return H E. All right. Cool. Now let's talk about Scala specific things which are string interpolators. First, I'm going to talk about S interpolators. Let me show you what I mean. Do you remember the little greeting function for kids that we wrote earlier? Hello, my name is David and I'm 12 years old. I'm going to uh, write a fancier implementation of that right here. So if I say name is David and age is 12, then the greeting will be Watch what I'm writing. I'm writing S quote. This is an S interpolated string. And inside, I'm going to inject the name in the age variables as the follows. So I'm going to say hello, comma, my name is dollar name. So this guy, this dollar sign tells the compiler that name will be injected in the string. And I am dollar age years old. All right? So dollar name and dollar age are expanded inside this s interpolated string, but they only work if you put this s inside. Otherwise, the string will be taken literally. Okay? S interpolated strings also have the property that they can evaluate complex expressions. So if I say hello, my name is David and I will be turning 13, let me show you what I mean. So if I say another greeting, which says, hello, my name is David, and I will be turning dollar and watch the curly braces, and I'm gonna say H plus one. Inside the curly braces, basically I can write any expression that I want. So dollar H plus one years old. Okay, so if I print line another greeting, it's gonna say, not in debug mode, but it's still fine. Hello, my name is David and I will be turning 13 years old. So this S interpolated string works as expected. So this is um, a very cute way of injecting names or values or even complex expressions inside strings without actually needing to 
decompose the string into its proper constituents and concatenating them at the end. All right, so quite powerful. We also have other interpolated strings available, for example, f interpolators. f interpolators act as s interpolators in the sense that they can expand values uh, or complex expressions inside, but they can also receive printf-like formats. Let me show you what I mean. So if I say, for example, that David can eat 1.2 burgers per minute, I can write an f interpolated myth. Okay, so if I say val speed is 1.2 f, which is the amount of burgers that David can eat per minute, I can create a string which is an f interpolated string. Notice the f before the quote, and I'm going to say name can eat speed. And then watch what I'm writing. I'm writing percent 2.2 f. This is a printf like format for displaying this value, which means um, two characters total minimum and two decimals precision. Okay, and say burgers per minute. So if I print the myth, it'll say. David can eat 1.20 burgers per minute, although we define speed as 1.2. The format forces the float be displayed 1.20 with enough precision. So this is worth breaking down. So f interpolators are for formatted strings in a printf like fashion. So if I have Daniel can eat 1.20 burgers per minute, the f interpolated string starts with an f before the quote, so this signals to the compiler that some values may be injected in the string. The dollar sign says that this will expand a value, this is the value name, and the percent %s is a string format from the printf uh, standard. Again, the percent %2.2f is for decimal representation, which says at least two characters and two precision decimals. This leads to the awesome fact that Daniel can eat 1.20 burgers per minute, which may or may not be true. Now, besides the fact that this is absolute insanity, the number 1.2 is displayed as 1.20 forced by the float format. Now, f interpolated strings also have the amazing property that they can also check for type correctness in the values that they expand. So if, for example, I have the value x, which is uh, a float, and the string representation calls for $x, which expands x, but with the percent %3d format, which expects a integer number, this will force the compiler to evaluate the type of x which will be expanded and if the types don't match the compiler will issue an error. All right now the final interpolator that I wanted to talk about the only one left is the raw interpolator. The raw interpolator works the same as the s interpol interpolator although it has the property that it can print characters literally so if I print for example the raw interpolated string. Um, this is a backslash n new line. Backslash n are usually escaped and printed as a new line. This will be printed literally. So if I run this guy, it will be printed literally. So backslashes will not be escaped. This is the property of the raw interpolator. However, if I have a value which says, I don't know, let's call this escaped, which has the same uh, value. This is a new line. If I print line the raw interpolated string with this escaped string injected instead, escaped, the backslash ends will be escaped. Okay, so this is a and the new line is escaped and the text is printed on two lines. So the raw interpolated strings ignores escaped characters inside raw characters in the string. Otherwise, injected variables do get escaped.
All right, so pretty cool things and also pretty powerful. We'll use string operations quite a lot in this course, but by now you should be well equipped. I'll see you in the next lecture.